There was a moment in Namibia when there were a couple of big, very big, young, kind of two and a half year old, three year old lions who, and we were in a kind of gully and they could very easily have just stepped into my open top, rather small Jeep. <laughs> I'm Mark Adlington and I am a painter and sometimes sculptor and I work principally with, with wildlife as subject matter. With lions in particular, there is a great kind of sensuality about them. From a purely artistic perspective, it's an exciting animal to work with. So it's, yeah, it's an amazing thing. The way that their feet and head and muscles all combine, I find absolutely fascinating. You start to watch the environment through their eyes. It's a bit like a kid watching their parent, I suppose. I was incredibly lucky to grow up in the west of Ireland. My grandparents had a, a family place in Kerry um, on the Atlantic, an actual stone's throw from the sea. And I spent a lot of time in the sea looking at seals and slightly obsessed by starting to recognise them. I was always so immersed, I mean, it's like a curiosity. But when I wasn't at school, which was a fairly brutal experience, I was out there at Christmas, Easter and long summers. I mean, I found everything about it totally gripping. And that hasn't changed at all. Everything about it feels right somehow to me. I went to art school around the corner here and I came up against quite quickly the, the bias against working with wildlife in the art world. What happened in fact is that in the print room where I was given free reign, I found myself going back to animals. I said, this is what I want to do. This is what excites me. I'm interested in movement and form. Painting. It was more finding the courage to resist the kind of forces of family and, and environment. Painting is a bit like a great spot the difference competition. So you're going, this is cooler, this is warmer, this is, you know, uh, more textured, this is flatter, it's all that pairing of opposites. Uh, underlying all of that is that wanting to get a sense of the, the whole. I think the thing is that as a painter you spend extraordinary amounts of time on your own and you can only carry on doing that if you are really excited by what you're painting and I think that early fascination you know, with seals and rock pools, carries on. You know, I mean, I, I've, been, I've been painting lions now for three years and it's a project that's a long time in the making. And it had to be done from life and to do it from life involved I mean, I would love to have been a wildlife cameraman in another life. But in terms of visual, you know, the lion works incredibly well for me. I love an animal that is the same colour as its background. Hey. Africa has that thing, I mean, apart from the sort of ra just completely ravishing beauty of the place, every morning you wake up 
and it's another adventure. You have no idea what you're going to see, how it's going to turn out. You know you are truly alive when you are living with lions. There was a moment in Namibia when there were a couple of big, very big, young, kind of two and a half year old, three year old lions. And we were in a kind of gully and they could very easily have just stepped into my open top, rather small Jeep. They were, they were that <laughs> close. There was a slight frisson of, I'm underneath a lion and they're sort of curious. Don't have to change a tire with slightly bored lions on, on the ground. They have much more acute hearing and, and smell and everything and eyesight than we do. They're basically a notched up version. They're just not bothered by you. And so they're just hanging out with you. And I mean, lions just don't, as a general rule, kill people. They have much easier options. So I think it's that kind of mythology. You have all this power and might, which is fantastically relaxed, you know, flopping around. There's something incredibly charismatic about that. I've always thought that the lion was the least well done. I wanted to be sure that I could bring something to the feast. It was something that I really wanted to take on. The way the fur works and the colors in the fur, everything kind of comes from the bone structure, um, you know, which is why I found having that skull around very useful. The whole point about animals is it's a, it's a living, moving thing. You're trying to get a, I mean, the sense of the fact that this is something that could get up and walk away, if that makes sense. I think a painting is more exciting when it has potential and edge and, you know, it's almost like finished means dead in a strange way. I think that's why the animal thing works so well for me because it's a, a question of being forced to, to work quickly enough so that all of those decisions are made with purpose and for a reason. I mean, I suppose a bit like a wildlife cameraman, you know, I, I want to explore every possible angle and option and an attitude, and that is infinite, you know, which is, which is what art is about. You, you know, you're only endlessly disappointed with what you're working on, but you always feel that the, the eureka moment and is literally just around the corner and you're almost there. I suppose what I'm always looking to do is to somehow translate my own sense of absolute wonder and kind of obsession so that somebody is as excited as I was when I had the experience. And I suppose with lions in particular, there is a great kind of sensuality about them. And I suppose in making the book and the exhibition together, I would also very much hope to draw attention to the fact that this is an animal we take completely for granted. It actually is in very serious danger of not being around in any real sense within 50 years.
what I'm hoping people who are going to live with these pieces are going to be getting is the distillation of, of all of that time and looking and experience and hanging out with these animals. Anyway, I had that thought afterwards. <laughs>